Welcome to episode 95 of the Girl About the Globe podcast. For this episode, I'm running through some tips and advice on packing for solo travel. If you're unsure what to pack for a solo trip, this episode is for you. Stay tuned. Welcome to Girl About the Globe, a podcast for you as a solo female traveller. Empowering women to travel solo with maximum adventure, minimum impact. Packing for a solo trip is always a bit of a challenge. I've been to 109 countries solo and I'm still undecided with what clothes to take. But one thing that I do have off to a T is everything else that I need to pack. I do travel with hand luggage to reduce my fare on airlines. And I do find that travelling with hand luggage is a bit of a challenge because I obviously want to take everything, but I cannot take all of my clothes and everything else that I would normally use day to day. That is the challenge of packing. You may want to take everything such as your tresemme hairdryer, your kitten heels and all different types of handbags which you use at home but when you travel practicality is the key and one of the most useful tips for packing is if you can travel light, do. Not only does it help reduce your baggage fees on planes but you'll just feel more comfortable walking from place to place without a heavy load on your back. The general rule of thumb is get everything that you think of that you need to take and then divide it by two at the very least. Enough clothes for one week is plenty as you can always do your washing on the road. First things first, what kind of baggage do you take? And as tempting as it may be just to buy a cheap bag, this is probably the biggest investment you're going to make in terms of packing. So It's definitely worth investing it in a decent backpack if you're looking for a backpack and you're going to be traveling for a long time. The last thing you want to do is for it to break when you're away and paying a bit more ensures not only a sturdier bag, but that it will definitely last longer. There are so many bags on the market, so it does all depend on personal preference, but the features to look for in a backpack are a rain cover, which is essential if you're traveling during rainy seasons, and you have your back strapped to the top of the bus, one with an internal frame, one with an attached day pack. I used to have an amazing backpack, which I no longer do anymore, but it also came with a little pink day pack, which I could unzip, and I could take it during the day, or zip it onto my main luggage during check-on in flights, because it gave me that extra bag to put things that I'd bought when I was away to check on it to the plane. Another feature is to look for zips, which you can lock together with a padlock for safety. And the final one is to make sure that you have the right volume for you. Backpacks come in different litre sizes. 65 litres is a good, decent size, and that's one that I've travelled with before. I've actually travelled for a year when I went to Australia and beyond with a 65 litre backpack. Backpacks are not only easy to carry, but they have comfortable straps for your waist and shoulders and they can be easily carried over rough terrain, which are perfect for places which don't have cemented roads. Africa, for example, I also took my backpack with me when I was camping in Africa. If you don't want to take a backpack, it's not necessary, you don't need to, but consider taking a suitcase, which is generally more suited towards city travel and places with smooth surfaces. I personally think suitcases are a bit difficult for places off the beaten track. If you're going on holiday or you're going to Europe, a suitcase is not a problem. Or even better, you can go for two-in-one, which is a backpack with wheels, so you can wheel it or strap it to your back. I tend to think that those are slightly heavier than a standard backpack. Burkhouse is a good brand that also sell wheeled travel backpacks. Once you've decided whether you're going to take a big backpack or a suitcase, the next thing is a day pack. So most of the big backpacks also have a day pack attached to them, which you can zip off and use separately. If you don't have a day pack, then you can take a zipped bag for walking around during the day. You can find material bags everywhere, but if you're after something a bit more practical that can be stored in your jacket pocket, there's one by Sea to Summit, which is called the Ultra Seal Day Pack, and it's very strong and practical and very compact, and it's perfect for carrying anything whether you're on a hike, shopping at a market or spending a day at the beach. You can buy backpacks and day packs from all outdoor specialists, hiking shops and retail stores. I also recently just bought a really good sturdy hand luggage suitcase from TK Maxx. So it's worth looking at branded backpacks and suitcases. Other good recommended suitcases are Antler 
Gelsey, Carabas and Samsonite. So once you've decided on your bag, what do you put in it? I have to be a bit honest here, we don't really need all of those belts, those multiple pairs of shoes and pieces of jewellery. When it does come down to shoe choice, always go for comfort. In terms of accessories, pick a handful of statement complementary items that will join an outfit together or plain items that can go with several outfits. This is where your mix and match skills come in. So for example, if you like hippie style, then take some cheap boho jewellery and colourful scarves to use every day. I also think that when I'm solo travelling, I do not want to be walking back, especially in the evening somewhere, wearing heels that I can't run in. So I do wear flat shoes just for the whole safety reason of being able to escape if I need to. Not that you really need to think about that, but I'm just quite vigilant now. In my opinion, if you can't afford to lose it, then just don't take it. Take costume jewellery instead of anything expensive and avoid taking a really nice watch, especially if you're venturing into less developed countries. And wearing expensive jewellery can make you more of a target. One packing trip, especially for hand luggage, is to take mini toiletries if you're only away for a short time. You can buy plastic bottles that you can just keep reusing and pour your favourites into them to take with you. Don't forget that unless you're going in the middle of nowhere, and I have found shampoo in the middle of nowhere basically, you can buy toiletries on your way. So you can just take the essentials with you. Instead of carrying a perfume, I do normally take a very small little perfume. You can also get perfume sticks, which are lighter to carry than a glass bottle. One consideration if you're going to be away for a while and longer than eight weeks, especially if you've got coloured hair, is to think about your hair. So highlights may look great now, but they may be difficult to maintain on the road. So I suggest either considering dyeing it all one shade and just taking extra colourants with you if, if you're going away longer than six or eight weeks. Or you can buy hair dyes in supermarkets abroad or just keep it natural. I do have highlights, but I have dyed my hair brown several times for longer trips you can also take little scissors with you if you can cut your own hair and there are also shampoo bars instead of a bottle of shampoo they're lighter and they last for up to 80 washes I really like the red one I think it's cinnamon and it's by Lush and I've used that several times to take with me paperwork is vital when you're going away and Nowadays, it's very easy, obviously, with e-tickets and reservations sent direct to your phone. I remember the days when you used to have to go to the travel agents and pick up your paper airline ticket before you flew. A good tip is to photocopy all of your paperwork or keep a separate copy of it, maybe scan it and email it to yourself. Also, print them off and keep the copies in a separate part of your luggage, especially with your passport. Make sure that you keep your passport in one place and a copy of it in another place. Don't forget, you can also buy shoes and clothes and anything else that you really need when you're away. So you don't have to take everything with you. Important documents to take. Passport, obviously, and the photocopy. For nearly every single country I've travelled to, and I've been to 141, you need at least six months validity left on your passport. If you only have six months you do need to get a new passport before you go. So make sure that you look at that before you start planning your trip. Other important documents are visas. Many countries now offer e-visas that get emailed to you. Make sure that you print it out as well. Flight tickets, obviously. Booking confirmations. Travel insurance is a big one. If you are going to be driving, make sure that you take your driving license, both parts, if it is a paper one and a card one. Make sure that the country doesn't need an international driving license as well before you go because you may need to apply for that. Make sure that you take a debit card and a travel money card. I travel with both. Good travel money cards are Revolut and WeSwap, which you can use to draw from the ATM. You can even just use it to pay in restaurants and bars and in shopping centres now. Take a credit card with you if you have one. Also take some of the local currency just in case you can't get access to a bank. Take any electrical equipment that you might need, things such as a plug adapter. I use a universal all-in-one plug adapter which covers me for practically every country around the world. Take your mobile phone, make sure that you unlock it which is something I didn't do before when I went to Africa 
So make sure that you go to your local phone shop and unlock it so that you can put a SIM card in it when you're away. If you are taking a camera, make sure to take a charger with you and an extra memory card. And if you're going somewhere off the beaten track or you're looking to camp in nature, take a torch and some batteries with you. I still travel with a small iPod, which is probably very outdated now, but I use that for running. So anything that you use to listen to music when you're running, you may want to take some Bluetooth headphones. One big tip here is to take a portable charger. So get a portable power bank, aside from your normal wall charger and cable that you use. They're compact, yet they're just enough to power up a couple of your travel gadgets without having to find an outlet because we all need our electrical appliances nowadays when we travel. And especially if you're solo traveling, because we use our phone for our booking confirmations, we use it to check in at the airport, we use it to navigate our way around. Last thing you want is for your phone battery to die. I do recommend getting a portable charger. First aid kit, I always travel with a little first aid kit. Within it goes my medical card with all my vaccinations. Make sure that the country that you're going to now, that you are covered if you are vaccinated with COVID. If you're not, check that you don't need to test to go into that country. Yellow fever certificate is essential for at least most of the African countries that I've been to and I have been asked to show it a few times. Anti-malarial tablets, if you're going somewhere that is a malaria zone, take antihistamines, mosquito spray or insect repellent, bite creams. Rehydration formulas are essential. I've used them several times and you don't need to be ill. Generally, if you have a funny tummy or food poisoning, that's what you would use a rehydration formula for. But I also use them when I'm just dehydrated. I travelled through the Middle East in Ramadan and I was getting headaches and I was lacking energy. And it was because I was actually dehydrated because I wasn't allowed to drink outside during the day, during the daylight hours. So I took some rehydration formula tablets and I put them into a glass of water and they worked a treat. So rehydration formulas, definitely recommend them. Take some painkillers with you. You can generally get this stuff in chemists. Imodium, strep seals if you've got a sore throat. Make sure that you take tissues or some toilet roll, especially if you're going somewhere off the beaten track. Take plasters in case you get any blisters on your feet. Hand bacterial gels for the last two years. Obviously, everybody's probably been carrying one of these. I also take vitamins with me just in case I'm not able to get all the fruit and veg and all of the vitamins that I need in the food that's in the country. I take vitamins and I also take probiotics. I used to always pick up parasites and stomach flu in less developed countries, but now I've been taking probiotics. Oh, this sounds like an advert for them. But now I've been taking them, honestly, I hardly ever get really ill. And it just helps with that good bacteria for the gut. I definitely recommend taking them. I take a little sewing kit and safety pins as well. And I also take earplugs because I'm a very light sleeper. Also, if you get travel sick like me, travel sickness tablets are essential. Other items to pack, sunglasses. I take a pair of prescription ones that double up as sunglasses as well as normal glasses. Then I also have a cheap pair of sunglasses for the beach. So it doesn't matter if I stand on them. If they get lost, I can always replace them. A towel. I actually travel with a microfiber towel and I also take a sarong, which doubles up as a towel and a sheet and something to lay on on the beach. Take some books with you or a Kindle. I have so many books that I now just take a Kindle because it's less space to pack. And I also have audio books on it as well. If you're going somewhere and you want to practice your language, you could take a language phrase book or it can also be on your Kindle. You can get little pocket sized phrase books that you may want to pack. Make sure to take a padlock and a combination one if you can. You can also get the ones that have got the keys in, but just in case you lose the key, it's a good idea to take a combination lock. If you travel with a guidebook, which I don't, you may want to take a guidebook with you. If you're traveling somewhere where it's known for pickpockets, then a money belt is a good idea where you can strap it around your waist and put your money inside it and then put it under your skirt or under your trousers. I always take a sealable bag, which is what I put my dirty washing in, and always a notebook and pen, because I think when you're traveling, there are going to be lots of times where 
you may be sat in a cafe and you just want to take some notes about what you've seen or how you feel or you've learned something from a tour or you might just want to journal and reflect on your trip. Sometimes, especially when we travel alone because we get so much alone time, all we want to do is just collect our thoughts. You might need to make a simple to-do list of things that you want to see the next day. You may want to collect the names and contact information of people that you meet. Obviously, people are now on Facebook and Instagram. But even still in this technological age, pen and paper is still the best. And I always carry a notebook and pen, plenty of pens actually, to jot down any notes that I want to take, especially on walking tours. If you feel like being sociable, you could take some playing cards with you. They're a really good way of introducing yourself to others, especially if you're staying in hostels and a good way of spending your evenings. Or you could just play solitaire for one when you're solo and it doesn't take up that much space. I now carry a little portable washing line and a sink plug for washing my clothes. You can always just buy washing powder from the local supermarket or wherever you are as well. But you can also get a tube of travel wash that you could take with you. I actually do that because it's cheaper than paying for laundry. But you can get laundry within hostels and also hotels. As well as a pen and paper, you could also just take a journal. So you can record your travel experiences and your memories while they're still in your mind. You can also keep tickets. I've met people who have kept their tickets and their maps and they've pasted them into a travel journal as a keepsake, which is such an amazing idea. Nowadays, everything that we save is kind of on social media and Instagram and Facebook. So it's lovely to actually have something you can hold of your travel memories. Toiletries. Whether I'm going away for a week, a weekend or a month, it's the toiletries that seem to take so much space. For toiletries, make sure if you wear contact lenses that you take your contact lenses and also glasses if you wear them. Take shampoo and conditioner. You could get a two-in-one if it's easier earplugs as I mentioned before, soap and shower gel, cotton buds, deodorant, moisturiser, toothbrush and toothpaste, perfume, makeup, any makeup wipes or the way that you normally use to take off your makeup, hairbrush, travel towel, tissues, suntan lotion, you can generally buy suntan lotion and after sun wherever you go and especially if you go into a touristy area and also remember your feminine hygiene products especially if you're going somewhere off the beaten track. Clothes packing list. So when you travel you can end up on long train journeys or you can hike extensively on mountain trails or you can spend hours on a bus getting to a new destination so the important thing to remember is to pack plenty of comfortable clothing that you can wear for any activity. If you're the kind of person who kind of divvers over what to take with you, it's a good idea to be strategic with this. Consider where you're traveling to, what activities you're going to be doing and what the climate will be, and then plan your outfits. What I do is lay all of my clothes on the bed and then I make a plan of the outfits that I need. From sightseeing to nights out, you need to know exactly what you're wearing and so you won't spend time debating in front of the mirror. Even if you've got a mirror, some places don't even have a mirror. And being strategic is useful if you're planning a winter breakaway where you're going to need extra layers because you can chop and change these for multiple days. If you style your clothes well, no one will know what you've worn before, especially if you travel quite fast like I used to and you're going from place to place within three to five days. You can just wear the same things. Nobody knows because you're going to be meeting new people again. But with clothes, obviously this all comes down to personal preference. So if you want to pack your favourite little black dress or your onesie, then do. Here are some ideas on what you could pack. Generally, I look at day clothes. I then take a couple of evening outfits. I then take my sports clothes. Some of my sports clothes also double up as things that I could wear during the day because they're comfortable or on long bus journeys. I also take my pyjamas. So I'll give you a quick list of each item. One pair of trousers, one pair of jeans, two skirts, you could have a short skirt and a long skirt, a short sleeve t-shirt, a long sleeve top, going out outfits times two, a day dress. Vest tops and strappy tops don't take up that much room and they do double up. You can also wear them in bed and you can always dress them up for the evening and also just wear them during the day as well. Take one pair of shorts, take a cardigan with you. 
This is kind of for the summer months or autumn or spring months. You can also take a fleece if you know the temperature is going to drop at night. I normally take a fleece and I just keep it over my hand luggage so it doesn't get packed in because it's quite bulky. I take my sarong as well and a bikini. For underwear, I take three different bras, all different colours. I take enough knickers and pants for a whole week and then I can wash them. I take a sports bra. I've actually got a sports bra that doubles up as a normal looking bra as well in case I run out. I take three pairs of socks. I then also take my trainers, which I can use for running or I can use for walking around cities and during the day. Trainers or sneakers. I also take a pair of sandals, which can double up as evening wear and also to look nice during the day and also a pair of flip-flops for the beach and also if I'm staying in any hostels flip-flops are ideal for going to the bathrooms and then I also pack a hat as well. So there you have it that is basically my packing list. I do try and stick with very similar colours I do try and mix and match my outfits as much as possible so that I have a lot of different styles that I can wear. I hope that you found this episode on packing useful and if you did there is actually an article on the Girl About the Globe blog called Packing Tips for Solo Travel which will help you decide what to pack. Thanks for listening. This is the last episode of Series 7 and I'll be back in October for Series 8. In the meantime, safe travels and have the most wonderful time. Thanks for listening to our Girl About the Globe podcast, making solo travel easier for you. Find everything that you need for your solo travels at girlaboutheglobe.com and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode.